Hello and welcome to this Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course, Lecture 20, Introduction to Duration. Now we're going to go down a very long, deep, dark road over the next few lectures and we're going to end up with something dreadful called convexity. But before we get to that horror, and anyone who knows about duration and convexity will know that convexity is a particular horror, now we're going to take a lot of little tiny steps and we're going to walk slowly through duration doing one small concept at a time. Now before we do that, I'm going to give you a choice of three different bond products and they're going to be delivered to you over five different years. There's years one to five there. We have a lump of money coming to you in one year's time and that lump of money is cunningly $683.01. We have another possible lump of money coming to you in three years and this lump of money is slightly more this is remarkably $826.45 and in five years we have another possible lump of money coming towards you and that's $1,000 exactly. Now which of these lumps of money would you like given a choice between having any one of the three of them? Well hopefully by now and hopefully after watching previous lectures you'll be saying well it depends, it depends on my preferred interest rate. Let's say your interest rate, your personal interest rate is exactly 10%, your yield to maturity is exactly 10% which of these three bonds are you going to choose if I offer you one of them for free? Well, it won't actually make any difference because if I present value all of these set three bonds, they will all come back at a yield to maturity of 10% at $620 and change, or $620 and 92 cents. So if I present value the first one at 10%, it comes back to that. If I present value this lump of money back to today, or right now, or T0, it also comes back to exactly the same sum. It comes back to $620.92. And that big lump of a thousand in five years' time, if I present value that back to today, it also comes back to $620.92. So at a yield to maturity of 10%, there's three different particular, what we'll call zero coupon bonds all come back to us as exactly the same amount of money. Now, let's give you another choice. I'm going to drop interest rates. I'm going to drop them by 5%. I'm going to drop them to 5%. And then I'm going to say to you, now which of these bonds would you prefer to be owning if you knew that interest rates were about to go down by 5% to 5%? Which would you prefer? Would you prefer this one or this one? or this one. To work that out we need something called duration and, and understanding the ideas of duration to figure out which of these three we would like to have. Now we need to get to a spreadsheet now to get to some mathematics and so on so let's do that now and here's a spreadsheet I prepared earlier. You can see I've got a yield to maturity there of 10% and I've got my three prices coming back. There's my thousand in five years time. There's my um, 826 in three years time. There's my 683 in one year's time, all coming back to today and the price or the, um, the present value of right now. Let's just put the formulas in here just so you can work these out for yourselves later. So I'll just put these up quickly so you can type all this stuff in yourself just to check it's all kosher. And these are all based on that figure there of yield to maturity of 10%, which is the YTM value, which you can see in each of these three different equations. Okay, let's not waste any more time on that. Let's take these prices then, let's copy these and we'll paste them into a special chart. So let's just paste the values and you can see that for the long bond, with its value of a thousand, at 10%, its price is 600 and 20.92 for the medium bond you can see that its price is 620.92 and for the short bond exactly the same figure now i'm going to drop interest rates to five percent here i want you to try and guess what's going to happen to the prices which of these bonds would you rather have the long the medium or the short now to avoid keeping you in suspense any longer Oh, before we move on, just notice all these prices here on this graph are all in exactly the same position. You might just be able to see there are three points at the same point. Let's just drop the interest rates then to 5%. And let's have a look and see which one we prefer. 
Let's take these three prices, copy them and paste them into this part of the graph. And lo and behold, you can see, you're probably ahead of the game, some of you, that 783 is the one that you want. You paid 620 for this bond because you knew interest rates were going down. And the next day, interest rates went down by 5%. And now the bond went up to $783. You've made about uh, $163. Well done, you. So you can see here that this long bond which is 1,000 is now worth 783. That's its fair value, that's its price. Okay, so let's see what happens then when we increase interest rates, not to 10%, but we increase them to 15%. What happens now? Well, let's just take these prices, copy them into the charts so we can have a visual impression. And lo and behold, if I paste the values in there, you can see the long one has really collapsed in price. It's collapsed down to 497. You paid 783 that day, you only get 497 the next day. What's that? About $290 or something. So you've lost a huge amount of money on the long one. On the short one, you've still lost. You know, you have still lost, but you haven't lost as much. You've gone from 650 to 593, which is only a loss of $57. So the short one here, which you can see along this line here, has hardly lost any value. The long one, the five-year bond, has lost a huge amount of value. And the medium one is somewhere in between. So we've got Daddy Bear, Mummy Bear, and Baby Bear. And this is why we need duration. Duration is going to help us figure out what's going on with prices when interest rates change or what's going to happen to prices when interest rates change. So we need to calculate this thing called duration and it will tell us the higher duration is, the more volatile a bond. So a high duration would be this blue one here which is going to be very volatile. It goes really up when interest rates go down, and it goes really down in price when interest rates go up. And the short-term duration, a low duration figure, is going to go up a little bit when interest rates go down, and go down a little bit when interest rates go up. Let's just see that graphically then to finish off this lecture. So if we do our five-year chart again, one, two, three, four, and five, the one year bond, it's actually going to have a duration set exactly to one. And we'll see why that is in a future lecture. The three year bond, there we are, that's actually going to have a duration of three, remarkably enough. And the final bond at the end there, the big lump of money at the end there, that's going to have a duration equal to five. Now this isn't always going to be the case. When we get coupons being added into these bonds later on, these duration figures are going to come down. So if this bond here gets coupons later on, this duration figure will come down. We'll show you how to work that out later on. And again, if this bond gets coupons, the duration figure will come in. But the lesson to take away from today, take this lesson away. If the duration is small, let's say it's only equal to one, then the volatility of the bond is very small. It's a kind of baby bear volatility. So as interest rates go up and down, its price hardly changes. When duration is larger, and it is a time-related measure, volatility is going to be slightly higher. It's going to be a mummy bear kind of volatility. Okay, here's mummy bear here. Very pretty there, very pretty mummy bear. And when duration is higher, so when duration is large, let's say five years, it's going to be daddy bear volatility. Its price is really going to swing round. Here's daddy bear here, very gruff looking daddy bear. Very angry looking daddy bear. He's got one of his ears bitten off in a fight. So the bigger duration is, which is a time related measure to do with bonds and other kind of cash flow payments, the higher the volatility of the price. When interest rates go up, then this price is going to go really down. And when interest rates go down, the price of this thing is going to rock it up. And there's going to be much smaller effects with much smaller durations. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. See you next time.